Hi, this is Rob Packard from Medical Device Academy. This video is going to explain where you can find the information that you need to submit for software validation and cybersecurity testing in your FDA eStar and also on our website where you can find the templates and the procedures you need in order to create those documents that you have to attach into the FDA eStar submissions for 510K and de novos. So I'm gonna share my screen and I'm gonna show you the FDA eStar template first. And then I'm gonna show you on the website where you can find the different pieces that you need to create those documents that are gonna go into your submission. So here we go, I'm gonna share my screen. Okay, this is the FDA eStar submission. It's version 5.0, which officially must be used as of uh, February 4th. You can use it earlier than that, but you won't be able to use version 4.3 after that date, you only will be able to use version 5.0 as of April 4th. I'm sorry, as of February 4th. So when you fill in this e-star, before you do anything, you have to identify it's a US submission, identify what type of submission. In this case, I used 510K as an example, but the results are the same for de novo. And then traditional submission, which is the most common type. And then this is a new application submission, not an additional information request. Then when we go down further on the form, I've, I've identified some standards here. Uh, you can ignore that. Here's the key section of the submission where it enables the software section and the cybersecurity section. If you say, yes, your device has software firmware, that activates the software section. If you say it has digital health technology, wireless, tech, uh, wireless communication, or software upgrades, those are the things that will trigger that this is going to require cybersecurity documentation. And those two sections are right after one another, come software first and then cybersecurity. And um, so we will go down to those sections. I believe it's around page 15. Okay, here's the beginning of the software section. And it talks about enhanced documentation and basic documentation. So the first thing you're gonna have to do is provide a justification for why your device is one or the other. And the way it's normally done is you say why it doesn't fall under enhanced documentation, therefore it must be basic. You don't have to provide a justification for basic. You're really just providing a justification for why it's not enhanced. Um, but if you wanna know more about what software documentation is required, click on this little help uh, button and it gives you hyperlinks to all three of the FDA guidance documents on software, including the most recent one from 2023. So that's where you find the different guidance documents you'll need on software. And then if you wanna know more about the software documentation level, you click on that hyperlink and it gives you it here. And then it's also described in that section right above the question. Um, once you've decided whether it's enhanced or basic and you've selected that from the dropdown, then you're going to have to attach the different documents and they want a separate document for each you can't submit the same document for each requirement because it will detect that it's the same document file name. So you have to split your documentation in to the different pieces that they're asking for. So when you create your software documentation, make sure you have templates for each of these documents. And the ones that you would create at the beginning would be a software description, a hazard analysis, uh, SRS requirements, and an architecture diagram, the first four listed. Um, one of the things that I wanted to point out also is in this new version 5.0, now they're asking for more documentation for hazard analysis. Now they want not just a software hazard analysis, but also the risk management file for the software. So that means, a, um, here, I'll click on it and it'll tell you. Here it says what's required. Um, but basically what they're looking for is a software um, uh, development plan or software risk management plan the software hazard analysis, and then the software risk management report. Those three documents is what they're looking for. And so you'd actually have three attachments under that blue uh, button. And all the others might have one or more documents as well. Now, because we said this also is a device that has um, either wireless communication or it has software updates, or it, it meets one of those requirements that says, this is something that has also cybersecurity risks. They populated the cybersecurity section as well. And when you click on this cybersecurity uh, help button, it tells you here are all the guidance documents for cybersecurity and tells you what they're looking for. 
um, for whether it applies or doesn't apply for cybersecurity. And then they're going to ask you for a lot of different questions and attachments. So it's actually a little bit more complicated in the cybersecurity section than it is in the software section. And you're going to have to answer questions with drop downs, yes or no. You're also going to have to attach documents. You're going to have to fill in text boxes that are asking for instructions. So you really want to look at this, this version five and what they're looking for before you even start developing your software. Yes, before you develop your software. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself in a situation where you have to rewrite parts or all of your code because it doesn't include the cybersecurity controls that they're looking for. And if you go a little bit further down in this section, we're still in cybersecurity. They're asking for things like an SBOM. They're asking for a cybersecurity risk assessment. They're asking you for um, unresolved anomalies um, that related to security, cybersecurity metrics you've got, what controls. Now, when we get down to controls, they actually list eight different types of controls that they want you to integrate into the design of your software. So every single one of those eight things should be a software requirement specification. They're specifically security specifications, but they should be included in your SRS. And if you don't include that, you're not going to be able to get this through the FDA because they say, please cite the page numbers of the attachment directly where you address each of those control requirements. And they list eight of them. So you can't say, well, we don't do that. Um, you're going to have to provide those requirements. So those all have to be something that you have considered as software requirements. And if you're not sure what some of those items are, you click on the little help button. And once again, they're telling you what each of these things are. And they're pointing you to the guidance document that explains more. And if you read that guidance document, it's going to point you to TIR 57, which is an Amy standard. Um, that's really the only cybersecurity standard you're going to have out there that's international only recognized in any way, um, but it, it is a U.S. national standard. And then on top of that, you're going to have some NIST standards that they recommend. Um, so that's where you're going to be looking for what those controls are. And then they have some views that they want you to attach, the architecture views, and they list four different views that we've never seen before, this new cybersecurity mm -hmm. guidance. And they explain those views here. So if you don't know what those are, read the guidance, read this help, you'll know what you need to provide. They provide even some examples. And then the last section is the cybersecurity testing. Well, next to last, um, cybersecurity testing, if you click on that, it actually tells you what testing they want. So it's not one of these items. They want all of these items, all four items, security requirements, threat mitigation, vulnerability testing, which is typically an automated test, and then penetration testing, which is usually a manual test. And they even say that for these attachments, they they want the final report from a third party, and they're going to want the, the qualifications of that person for that did that pen testing. Not just anybody hacking into your software, but they want the actual qualifications of a person that knows how to do pen testing properly. And whatever they found, how did you go about uh, mitigating that problem, uh, remediating it, uh, implementing some sort of uh, a patch or upgrade to your software so it addresses that vulnerability. And then the retesting to show that the new patch uh, or update that you made fixed the problem so it's no longer vulnerable. Um, they, of course, have cybersecurity labeling that you have to include, a cybersecurity management plan, which is going to cover some of the post-market aspects. And you're going to have to indicate what page elements are found on those on that document as well. So that concludes the cybersecurity section. Now, if you don't have your own procedures for this, where you're going to look, um, number one, on our on our website, we sell SYS44, and these are all the documents that come in that. So you get access to this folder. We have the guidance document from 2023 in here, and we have all these templates in here for documenting your cyber uh, your software validation. So we've even got the the new. Um, documentation level evaluation template, whether it's basic or enhanced, that's there. A hazard analysis template. Um, we've got unresolved anomalies. So everything that you need is covered in here. And then we have another doc, another standard or uh, procedure for cybersecurity. And in this section, we've got the guidance document from 2023. 
We have two NIST public um, publicly available guidance documents. We have a cybersecurity risk assessment, the risk management plan um, template, an SBOM template, architecture, vulnerability, and the cybersecurity work instruction. So everything you need is included in here, except for TIR 57, which is a recognized standard. And in the other one, we don't have uh, IEC 62304, which is a, a recognized standard. So um, that's what you should be looking at, but it really helps. I wanna emphasize one more time. It really helps to actually go to the E-Star and uh, select those things at the top to trigger the sections for software and cybersecurity and look through that section and read each of the helps and come up with a plan. Sort of what I would do if it were me, I would create an Asana uh, project for software and a, a Asana project for cybersecurity. And I would list all the act all the items that I need. And I would take the, the help information and the guidance information. I would copy and paste it into the Asana task. So I knew this is what I need for each item. So people were really clear on my team all the action items they needed to include in the software project. And then each of those would become software requirements in um, the SRS. And then eventually the, each of those would get unit testing. You'd have an SDS, you'd have integration testing, and, and finally uh, the system validation. So I, I hope that helps you identify, this is where you find what the requirements are. You can get a lot of helpful information actually in the E-STAR and it's in our procedures and it's in the guidance documents, but uh, a lot of companies develop their software and then try to do the documentation and that doesn't work. The FDA has made that very difficult because they've said, you have to show us where these things are. So if you didn't put them in the design up front, you're probably gonna be missing some of those elements. I hope that helps. If you have further questions, please contact us and we'll try to help you further. Bye-bye.